Oops, there's one more objection I forgot to cover. And it's a surprisingly common one when you're just now really becoming aware of the import. What is the spiritual life? Why it's this way? This whole business about integration wise. Actually, the integration is to run through you just like it runs through Christ. You're an extension of Him. That's the whole idea. And all those people who didn't learn Him are going to be, as it were, attached to you and they're going to be integrated into you so that they can get information about Him through you. That you get. Okay, but when it really hits, besides the three categories of objections I just mentioned, there's a fourth. And it'll hit you at certain moments. It'll go something like this. Oh, I figured this out too late. I can't make it now. I'm too late. Remember, the devil has... You have a guardian devil as much as you have a guardian angel. And one of the jobs of the guardian devil is to send you thoughts. My pastor called that demon thought transference. To send you thoughts that are going to tip you into whatever direction he wants you to go in. Which, of course, is the wrong direction. And this is one of them. It sort of ties to the first category of objections that you're being arrogant because you're again looking at you, your smallness, your weakness, your stupidity, your blah, 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 blah. But it's not about you. It's about God. It's not about your weakness. It's about God's strength. What was that? When I'm weak, then I'm strong. He was throwing the passage at me. I think it's Second Corinthians 12, 9, and 10. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. I use that verse a lot when I'm feeling shitty, which is most of the time. Part of the reason to have that kind of experience of being low is because you're going to be a king over those who are going to be feeling like that. And that way you can empathize with them and you'll know better what you need to do or say to get the information into their heads. You'll have a better empathy for them if you go through what they went through. It's the same analogy in Hebrews, what was it? Hebrews 2 through 4, that Christ became man. Not angel, but man. Went lower. Therefore, he could pay for the sins in between of the angels, which were higher than human, because he's also God and man. That stretch. Okay? Well, you get put really, really low as a human, because in your kingdom, there are going to be those at the very bottom. And you will have been through, and they will know you have been through what they went through. So one of the temptations is going to be, oh, I don't know what possessed me to think that I could actually grow to kingship. I started, I'm getting started too late. It's never too late. It just isn't. How do I want to put this? God foreknows when you're going to get serious about scripture. You might have been a Christian for 15 years and then all of a sudden you run across these audios and now God uses them to make you serious about scripture. It hasn't got anything to do with me. He just uses whatever tool he uses and sometimes he'll use this tool. Sometimes he uses some other tool. But the point is you're serious now. And maybe you're 50 or maybe you're 65. Okay, or maybe you're 40 or even 30, and you think, well, I'm just getting started now. This is a lifetime thing. Brainout's been in it for 40 years. I'll never make it. No, don't go by time. Okay, Christ matured in 12 years. Remember, he's in the temple. His parents have forgotten about him and went home. 
And Mary even metered that in her Magnificat. She even metered that event before it even happened. I don't know if she knew it was going to happen and then forgot and then was reminded when it did happen, but she metered it. That's why Luke's telling that story. It's one of the meter benchmarks. All of his gospel is tacked. The, 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 the numbers are tacked to numbers in her meter. You know, like when it says Anna was 84, that's part of her meter. So Luke includes it. It's hysterical. Okay, well, when Christ was 12 years old, his parents forgot about him, and, you know, it's six days between Jerusalem and Nazareth, and so they're halfway home, and it's like, where's our kid? They forgot him. <laughs> okay, so then they come back. And he says to them, you know, how, how come you don't know I'm going to be in my father's house? See, he's so mature at that point, he's calling God his father. He's matured enough to be able to tolerate the recognition of who he really is. Okay? Now, if he could get there in 12, 12 years, you say, yes, but that's Jesus Christ. Yeah, but obviously... You can go a very long way in 12 years. And how do you know God isn't going to give you the extra time? Hezekiah was stuck in the same situation. When when he was he was real mature for a while, and then he gets cattywampus and negative toward God. And so finally Isaiah goes to him and says, Okay, Hezekiah, you're going to have to put your house in order. Hezekiah didn't have any kids at that time. And he says, oh, please, give me more time, God, give me more time. And so then Isaiah comes back and God's, you know, Hezekiah, he tells Hezekiah, okay, you got 15 more years. And then three years later, Manasseh was born to him. So now there was a king to continue. And then Hezekiah dies when Manasseh is 12 years old. You can read all that in the book of Isaiah. Okay, so... God will grant you longer time. David lived seven more years after he retired. He died at 77, not age 70. Okay? That's in the Bible. And he spent that last seven years, First Chronicles 22 through 29, getting the temple ready. Getting the temple service ready, the you know the the organization, the blueprints, the materials, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then there was a civil war after David died, short short term. Okay, well, almost a civil war, not quite. And so the first three and a half years, just, you know, Solomon just sat on it, didn't start the temple. Okay, so what's the point there? The point there is there was opposition to the kingship. The point there is there was a delay in time, and yet God managed to get the temple built on time. Because the temple is dedicated in the very last year that Moses' 490 time grant ran out. And I covered that in my genius.xls worksheet. The point is, is that it's never too late. And you say, oh, but brain out, you know, what if I die in five years? So what if you do? Wherever you are today, you can be more closer tomorrow. So, even if you got started now, and let's pretend that you really needed 10 years to reach full kingship, and you didn't quite get there, and you die in 5 years instead, you'd be having grown a lot more than you are now in 5 years. Because remember, we're going to be standing before Christ. And all we're going to care about is being close to Him. So your position will be closer to Him. If you start now, even if you only live until tomorrow. Now as you get closer and closer to the goal of being mature enough, You'll begin not to even care about whether you make it. You're just going to care about today. I need to get closer to you today. 
it, it just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it becomes the only way to want to live. is to see him, to learn him, to put Bible into everything. Because that's what makes it tasty to live today, now. And then you're really seeing through God's eyes. Because what makes it tasty for God to look at all of this junk that he sees now with all the religiosity and all the using his name, but, you know, their, my name is on their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what he sees all the time. All the stupid, stinking Christian and Jewish and hypocrisy. How does he tolerate it? Because a few people are learning him today, now. Matthew 4.4, 4, always occurring. That becomes your own motive for getting through the day. I can't stand to get through the day if I don't have some Bible use I can make of it. Because there's nothing here. I really feel like an alien. You know, when I turn on the TV or, you know, get on the internet or something, it's like, who are these humans? I don't belong here. And we don't. We're citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven, it says in the Bible. I forget where it was. I want to say it's Philippians 3.20, but I'm not sure. The Greek word, the Greek word there is pol polytuma. E-U-M-A. Ending. Okay. So you begin to feel more and more not a part of this world, more and more detached. And then you look at all the preoccupations of people and it's like, what is the, the human so weird, so alien, so low? And then you hate yourself because that's what you are too. So it's not really arrogance, it's just a recognition that you're like not even part of yourself anymore so the fourth objection that somehow it's too late is answered by well you really don't know that God can do it really quickly for all you know and the second answer is but you got today you can grow today even if you didn't make it as king you, you've got some progress you can get. So go for it. And that's pretty much like a soldier thing. You know, how many soldiers, you know, they get hurt or they get, you know, put in a corner in battle. And why don't they just give up? And a lot of them don't. A lot of them say, okay, I got you know, maybe 10 minutes of life left, but here's how I'm going to use it. I'm going to go down fighting, or I'm going to take them with me. And they manage to get up that one big last ounce of courage, and bam -o! And they go over the trench and into the war. And some of them, they expected to get killed the minute they did that, but they don't get killed. And they go on, and they even come home. Audie Murphy was one of those, I think. His name just came to mind. There are a lot of heroes who really expected to die. And they didn't think of themselves as heroes. They were faced with a cut and dry choice. I can die now. And I probably will. Do I want to die cowering? Or do I want to die, you know, fighting? And they decide they're going to die fighting. And then they just don't die. That might be you. You don't know. And just to give you a sense of just how quick it can be. I would consider myself to be, you know, as a human, compared to other humans, bottom of the barrel. Okay? I sound good because I'm really well trained. I'm really well trained because I sat and listened to my pastor day in and day out. But I gotta tell you something. I started listening to him day in and day out in 1975. But I wouldn't pay much attention. In 1985, I got clobbered. God made it real clear that that was why. So I said, okay, I'm going to get real serious. So I got real serious. And I really started listening to him then. 
but you know what it didn't make it didn't really gel it didn't gel for me until I want to say 1998 and then it, then bam 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 all the pieces fit together and most everything I've been saying now for the last 15 years I knew by 2001 that was three years in the tribulation the 144,000 Jewish evangelists they're going to mature in three and a half years so how do you know that God isn't going to mature you that fast you see the point so don't don't assume that because you're coming late to the party that the party's over for you it's not just keep going day in day out watch what he does he can grow you fast and you'd be surprised you know I mean you can sort of explain this in a rational way too all this time you've been learning 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 something and all he has to do is connect the dots this is why one of the prayers you're gonna to want to make is like for all the pastors pray for the Pope pray for all these people who spent their life in Bible because they've spent their life in Bible but they haven't learned it and if they suddenly woke up tomorrow and they say oh man I haven't really been paying attention to God this has been all I don't know for ego or something and now they're interested in God he can connect the dots real real fast for them because they have spent their life in Bible that's what he did to Paul you know, Paul was an unbeliever. He spent 14 years. My pastor spent a lot of time working out this maturation timing. Okay, he was trying to figure out what's the norm. Okay, and he came to the conclusion there really isn't one. But for Paul, he is hit on the Damascus Road, made blind. He's an adult, maybe in his 30s. And he had already been schooled in scripture since he was 14 under Gamaliel. So it's not like he didn't have the scripture words in his head. He had them. But he didn't learn anything. See, this is what I mean. You learning, ever learning and never coming to an epinosis knowledge of the truth, which is in second, what was it? Second Timothy 2, 26 through 3, 7. Specifically 3, yeah, 3, 7. Okay. That was Paul. That's why it was so funny that he could write that verse in Second Timothy. So now all of a sudden he struck blind so he could finally see. And he's getting all this insight and understanding. Bam 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 bam. Enough to be able to speak boldly for Christ within months. And then he's taken round Robin to the Christian communities. And at first, they'd heard about how he was persecuting Christians. So they didn't want to talk to him. But he was taken round Robin. And then at some point, I'm not sure when, um, he knows he has to be alone. So he goes to Arabia. For 14 years, he's alone. Then he comes back. And that's when his ministry begins. Okay, so for him, the maturation process enough to write scripture because remember he no sooner comes back that he's writing scripture the earliest of his letters I want to say was like 49 I'd have to go look it up it's in Luke Dateline meters I organized them because he datelines all of his books just like all the other Bible writers do with the meter and so 30 to 49 is a total of 19 years. Might even be earlier than 49, I'm not sure. But if we say it's 49, well, that's only 20 years. So, if you're 60, God will probably give you 20 years. Because remember, Paul was the worst sinner who ever lived by his own admission. You're not the worst sinner who ever lived. So you don't have as much repair to go through. See the point? So, 
It was 20 years till Paul was so mature he could write scripture. Well, in 20 years, maybe you're not so mature you can write scripture, but you can be spiritually mature enough to be a king. You see the point? I mean, 20 years is pretty doable. If you're 60 now, I'm 62. 20 years from now, God can give me 20 years. I don't want to be alive that long. I wish I was dead yesterday, but... See the point? And chances are you're not 60 years old. You might be 55. You might be 50, 45. Whatever your age is, 20 years is not asking a lot. And even if you were 80 years old, it's not unlikely that you'll live to 100. If you're 80 years old now and you're reasonably active, and God could just make you live that long. And by the way, you don't have to be like in fit health. You can be, you know, chained to a bed and learn and live on Bible. In fact, in many ways, that would be a really um, efficient way to do it. It's very hard to have to be, you know, bedridden. But you can be bedridden. You can be paralyzed. That's the, the, the thing about the spiritual life is it doesn't really demand the body. And God can keep you on life support. And you'll have whatever pains and aches and problems and, you know, annoyances that go with that. But you can, even if you're paraplegic, get there. So don't ever think it's too late. Because it probably isn't. And even if it were, you still got today. You can be ahead, you can be more ahead tomorrow than you are right now. As if you were in a foxhole. As if you were a soldier in a foxhole. And okay, you're going to die, but let's go out with a bang. Okay? Peace out.